welcome uh, Navunipa Bhattacharji for this maiden round of conversations, online conversations with Plato's case. Thank you very much for joining Shayan and me for this uh, conversation. We will be talking about Bengali identity in the North East. Uh, whenever we talk about the North East, at first we are generally thinking of the Mongoloid populations in the northeastern provinces of India, their histories, the division of the states, various forms of resurrection, beautiful scenery, some exotic food items, etc., etc. But we don't really think of Bengalis when we are talking about the northeast. Why exactly is that? Okay, uh, so to begin with, uh, thank you, Obin and uh, Shion. I hope I have got your name correctly, the pronunciation. So thank you very much, and thanks to Plato Skates uh, for uh, you know this invite and uh, opportunity to speak uh, on a group of people who uh, inhabit uh, a space which is uh, quote unquote. Uh, not their own. And the reason for that is, of course, the primary reason is, uh, you know, that we associate territory with culture, right? And that is where, and then in this case, there is a disruption, there is a disjuncture, there is a break, because uh, the Bengalis uh, were and are supposed to live in this space called Bengal, which is, again, uh, very, very fluid, uh, you know, uh, of course, there is a territorial, you know, concept, boundary, etc., so on. But uh, I think if we can begin with this idea that how a group of people uh, who, uh, quote unquote, again, cannot claim Northeast or the space called Northeast again as their homeland came to inhabit that space. So, uh, and in order to do this, and I'm sure uh, most of our viewers will be, uh, you know, uh, aware, uh, we need to go back to the history of this region, which uh, came to be, you know, designated as northeastern India, and which is only a uh, 1970s development. I mean, properly speaking, the idea was there, but then, you know, formally, kind of officially, to the extent that we have a separate ministry uh, called, uh, you know, the Donor Ministry. I don't think any other region in India has, uh, including uh, space and, you know, uh, 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 as volatile as Kashmir, for instance, really did not have a, a ministry, right? But, but Northeast uh, has a ministry. There are various reasons for that, geopolitical reasons for that. And, uh, but we are not going to that at the moment. So we need to go back to the history of the, what came to be known as Northeastern India. So uh, we uh, uh, we have to go back, uh, you know, in modern times, we have to go back to 19th century uh, to understand uh, the Bengali presence in the region. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, that is because, you know, it's it's easier. We, we are talking about the colonial period, right? Now, as adjacent regions, Bengal and uh, Assam, uh, uh, there was always a movement of people. Uh, to and fro, you know, across uh, borders. And uh, because uh, borders, uh, as, uh, you know, Sudip Tokaviraj, for instance, famously tells us uh, that uh, we're not so marked and clear uh, in what may be called maybe pre-colonial, uh, pre-British colonial times or pre-modern times. So they were fuzzy as he uses, you know, he uses this particular word called fuzzy. So, of course, there, there was, you know, this lot of similarity between the Bengalis and the Assamese and so on, the movement of people. But uh, issues began to arise with the British annexation of Assam in early 19th century. And that is because the uh, uh, British, uh, uh, the imperial state uh, helped, uh, uh, you know, defeat the Burmese. And the Treaty of Yandabu was signed, uh, signed in 1826. Uh, and thereafter, Assam became part of, and this is part of regular history. You can open any textbook and review this. Now, uh, 
the problem was that because of Bengal's uh, exposure to colonial rule in the early phases, uh, so obviously uh, the Bengalis were used to run even the Assam province, and Assam became part of Bengal presidency, this bulky thing called Bengal presidency, uh, which had almost everything in its eastern India, every space was uh, under its jurisdiction. So that, that's what happened, and uh, Bengali was introduced as the state language of Assam between 1826 and 1860, uh, 1864 actually, 1861. And it was used as a medium of language in schools, etc. Et in 1832, uh, Kachar, which uh, uh, is now Kachar, Kurimgonj, and Haila Gandhi, three districts of Assam, uh, became uh, uh, the Kachari kingdom, also uh, was annexed by the British in 1832. So we have these three adjacent, you know, uh, uh, regions uh, uh, in that space called Eastern India, very large, huge space called Eastern India, Bengal, Assam, Achha. But of course, uh, because of uh, the, the intervention of the American Baptist missionaries in Assam, and uh, also uh, the, the, the emergence of the Assamese middle class, we see a sustained campaign to do away with Bengali as the uh, medium of instruction, language uh, for, you know, official purposes in Assam. And that happened. Now, the next important phase in order to understand the Bengali presence uh, is that, uh, is 1874, which uh, on many occasions and in some writings, uh, I have called, in fact, the first partition of Bengal. And something that is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, mentioned anywhere. Uh, and uh, uh, this has been a kind of, uh, 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 I will not say deliberate, but well, uh, you know, frontiers or margins rarely feature in our imagination. Even those of those who claim to be speaking for the margins, and that's really very unfortunate. So uh, what happened was uh, Assam was separated from the Bengal presidency and created as a chief commissioner's province in 1874. Now, uh, that was okay because Bengal presidency was bulky, so they wanted to, you know, create, uh, the, you know, reasons of the imperial state, the statecraft, not to go into that. But what happened was, along with uh, Assam, which was separated, uh, the districts of Silet, uh, which was a Bengali-speaking district, uh, Kachar, of course, uh, which was also part of the Bengal presidency, I will not say it was... Bengali speaking, but heavily influenced by, uh, uh, you know, by, by Bengal. Uh, and it was, you know, most of the kingdoms of that uh, space, like the Tripura kings, for instance, they were all influenced by Bengal because of the dominance of Bengal. Uh, I will not again use the hegemony here because the word hegemony here, because that's again, uh, so we, let's call it uh, you know, dominance. And then what happened was, uh, Silet Kachar, Gualpara, which is now, uh, you know, the, the, the region which connects northeast to the rest of India. That's where you have to pass via Gualpara, right? Uh, and uh, the hills, you know, the Nishai hills, the Naga hills, the Kasi and Jaintia hills, all of these became part of, uh, uh, you know, Assam. Now, the separation of Silet in particular uh, was resented by the people of Senate. They did not want, and the reason given was basically, uh, you know, deficit, uh, you know, economy of the newly created province of Assam, and Silet, uh, you know, was a tea group growing district, and a financially a solvent, uh, you know, district, and therefore it was included in Assam. Uh, not many of us, so this was the first, uh, you know, uh, uh, break, in a way, in a way, uh, uh, there could be many others of which, uh, you know, we may not be even aware, right? So, uh, but this is something that we know of. Uh, this was, this has never featured, you know, very rarely in any writings, uh, you know, on, on, in fact, nobody was even bothered about Silet and the fact that a Bengali speaking district uh, became part of Assam. They campaigned to return to Bengal, right? uh, but that did not happen. So what we have is, a movement launched and uh, the documentary evidence is available at the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library called the Select Reunion Movement Papers. 
and Sillet campaigned consistently, including submitting a petition to Lord Northbrook, right, who was the Viceroy, and uh, to reunite with Bengal. Very, very emotional, you know, writings on that phase, you know, where both Hindus and Muslims of Sillet are, you know, they are campaigning. And they're saying we are Bengalis, but we are lodged in Assam. So we have another very important phase in what can be called official Bengali presence in Assam. Because Sillet was officially included in the administrative setup of Assam. So this is the scenario uh, that we have in the 19th century. By late 19th century, all reunion efforts failed, right? Because the imperial state did not concede and, you know, the reunion is out of question. As I said, I insist that both Hindus and Muslims together, and they wanted to return. Saying that, and again, very importantly, uh, saying that, you know, we cannot live with the Assamese, they are backward people, Bengalis are a forward-looking community and so on and so forth. I'm sure most of us know those things. But that did not happen. And uh, then we move to the 20th century. Late 19th century onwards, we also witness the movement of predominantly Bengali Muslim peasants from the Maiman Singh district of Eastern Bengal. Right? So, Silet is also is an adjacent district. You know, Maiman Singh and Silet are next to one another. Right? Now, if you know of Bangladesh, you will know. But Silet was anyway technically part of Assam, but Maiman Singh was not. But then everything was one Indian subcontinent. So obviously there were no border controls and, you know, uh, any uh, curbs on the movement, you know, free movement of people. So we see the uh, migration of Bengali predominantly peasants, uh, um, Oh, uh, you know, late 19th uh, century onwards, and that was facilitated by the colonial state, right? And uh, therefore, we have the presence uh, of, uh, you know, by 1910, 15, we have a sizable section uh, of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bengali uh, Muslims, plus we have Silet, we have Sileti Hindus, and we have Sileti Muslims. Sileti Hindus dominating the administration of Assam in terms of uh, appointments, services, everything. Because this, there was already a, almost yeah, a, a solid Western educated, Calcutta educated middle class in Silet, particularly among Sileti Hindus, but also amongst Sileti Muslims, right? All, you know, because Calcutta was the nerve center and therefore this happened. So we do see the presence of, uh, you know, an all official, again, I use the word official within quotes, but uh, you know, uh, the colonial state did not have a problem. But the Assamese middle class, definitely uh, as its cons uh, identity got consolidated over this period of time, began to resent. And therefore, questions of language, identity, identity-based, uh, you know, language-based mobilization and so on. And as we, most of us know that uh, uh, this is, these are middle class concerns, right? These are middle class concerns. So, uh, this was also brewing, right? Uh, 30s, we see the introduction of what is called the line system in Assam, which was meant to segregate, uh, you know, the Assamese, particularly in the Brahmaputra Valley. So Assam was divided into two divisions, colonial Assam, the Surma Valley Division, which had Silet and Kachar, and uh, the Brahmaputra Valley Division. So... Uh, the line system, and by that time, we also have to look at the politics of Assam and the Bengalis within the larger politics of the colonial state, rise of the Muslim League, uh, you know, uh, uh, not really demands for partition, but yes, uh, identity-based, uh, you know, religious identity-based mobilizations also, you know, all India level. Uh, and there are a lot of things here, I won't, uh, you know, go into that, but we do see this presence. So obviously it was resented by the Assamese middle class heavily. And in case of Silet, if I may say, uh, uh, Silet was a permanently settled district. Very important permanent settlement when, when it comes to, you know, the economic system, the land system was there. Silet was part of the Calcutta High Court, right? So it's very interesting that these Bengalis who lived in Assam, but actually <laughs> uh, was very, very closely connected to 
Bengal. And that has a history, like I've told you, of course, I've just given you, you know, that's in a nutshell. But that happened. So by, uh, by the time, you know, India neared partition, uh, still it was a Muslim majority district. Bengali speaking Muslim majority. So Muslim League had a special interest or, you know, the papers say, and I've been also told by eyewitnesses uh, to what, uh, to the Silet referendum, including my father, who was a volunteer in the, in the Silet referendum in 1947. He was 16 years old. So he is no more, but I have eyewitness accounts of the Silet referendum and something written by him too, where he says that this is what happened. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, so, and then we have uh, uh, tremendous churning in Assam's politics. There's a provincial, you know, uh, uh, provisional Muslim League government and so on. So by the time, and uh, another thing, Silet was also part of the Bengal Congress. And it was not part of the Assam Congress. So this is important. Very, very important. So when it came to referendum, uh, nobody in Assam Congress... Uh, sided with Silet because Silet was part of the Bengal Congress and partition had to happen uh, uh, in Bengal and uh, in Punjab. But Muslim League was interested in Silet, so it was decided that you know uh, that uh, Assam was a Hindu majority uh, district uh, a province, but uh, it was a governor's province by then. But Silet was not, so a referendum was to be held in Silet. And that's what we see in uh, Mountbatten's uh, 3rd June 1947 statement. Accordingly, a referendum was held on 6th and 7th July. Only two places in India, as you know, Northwest Frontier Province and Silet went through a referendum. The fight was between the Muslim League and the Congress. And uh, uh, Muslim League won the Silet referendum. Right? So, and Silet became part of East Pakistan. But a line was drawn, the, the border boundary, and Silet was also part of the Bengal Boundary Commission. So the line which was drawn, actually, major portions were ceded, of course, to East Pakistan. Only one tiny bit, which is what is known as Karim Ganj, was part of Silet, original Silet, that was retained in India. And the, the reason was uh, given was that and there are, you know, I, again, I won't go into that a lot of details, that because that's the only, uh, uh, unless India retained Karim Ganj, uh, all communication with, with Tripura would be blocked because there's, there's no route, you know, that to go via Silet. It's a very strategically important uh, location. Anyway, so, uh, and Assam Congress stood and watched and uh, wanted Silet out of Assam because it wanted Bengalis out of Assam. And Sileti Bengalis dominated, as, I, as you know, everything. Official up, and uh, as I've written in many places, that you know, Assam heaved a sigh of relief. Gopinath Bordoloi, the first uh, uh, prime minister, you know, in those days, he would. They were you know, a great relief that finally. Uh, you know, uh, it was golden calf which was sacrificed. And interestingly, uh, in whatever literature you read, again, this is uh, 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 really uh, uh, sad about the current scholarship is that nobody calls the ouster of Silet as partition of Assam. And because, you know, even as it was a major portion of it uh, was given away. I mean, by, the, by a referendum and so on. So Congress lost the referendum. So, but it has never been called partition of Assam. So, as if Silet was something which was completely, uh, uh, you know, an anomaly, a problem which was there and you know, happened. But Silet's ouster did not solve Assam's problem. And 1947 to 1971, again, is an important phase. 1951, we have post independence India's first census. Assam census, which is a very critical census because it's on the basis of that, the notes, in fact, which were uh, part of the, uh, the, the, the document prepared by R.B. Vagaiwala, uh, uh, you know, it's called, it's Vagaiwala census, very famous, which said that, you know, uh, the Assamese speakers had grown in large numbers in Assam, you know, uh, language speakers. And one reason was because the Muslims, particularly of Maimon Singh's stock, also 
uh, said that you know Bengali would be there, As Assamese would be their mother tongue. They did not say Bengali. So we see a huge rise in number, uh, you know, of uh, uh, Bengali speakers. Next phase is a troubled phase in Assam. And this is despite the fact that Silet was now officially out. But Kachar remained, you know, because no referendum was held in Kachar. Because Kachar was not a Muslim majority district, right? Because the, so in case of Assam, as Bidhu Chakraborty, who <laughs> the controversial vice chancellor of Shanti Niketan, uh, was one of the first to write on the Silet referendum, uh, a piece, uh, a chapter in one of his books, uh, says that it was a vote on twin issue. In case of India, everybody voted on religious lines. But in case of Assam, it was religion plus language, which did not happen elsewhere in India, in Bengal or in Punjab. Right? So what we have, therefore, is uh, 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 not only the problem did not, there was no solution to these problems, but refugees began to pour in from East Pakistan. From Silet, those who, uh, you know, who anyway lived, but they anyway had a rightful claim because they were anyway part of Assam. But they finally eventually left everything and came over. So we see that phase, 51 to 71, troubled phase, this Bongal Khedha movement, which is House Bengali movement in the 60s. Then we have uh, imposition of Assamese as the state language of Assam. We see the language movement in uh, what is now called Borak Valley, you know, uh, the epithet three districts taken together, language movement, 11 people shot down, uh, you know, in Silchar and fighting and eventually Bengali being restored as the other state language of Assam. This was a success, but there are a series of, you know, and of course, tremendous burden on Assam's economy, on space, territory, and of course, culture and identity. It was an assault. Sadly, the Bengali problem did not go away. The Bengali identity remained became a fractured, more complex identity in the post-partition period. 1971, we have the Bangladesh war. Refugees began to pour in, uh, not in fact so much from Silet, but which, and that's the case with West Bengal too. We see huge. So these two spaces, you know, were completely transformed by the Bangladesh war. West Bengal as well as, uh, you know, what is known as Northeastern region. And then, uh, 79 onwards, we have the Assam movement, right? So the Bengali identity, and I will just stop here, I've taken a long time, uh, was shaped by these historical processes and whatever happened. So unless we look at 200 years, uh, we really cannot uh, understand the complexity of Bengali identity construction uh, in northeastern region, and I'm mainly talking about Assam. Uh, and until 1972, it was all Assam. This is very important because in 72, 70s onwards, we see the hill state movement and uh, Assam breaking up into all the states. Earlier, there was only one colonial Assam and two princely states, Tripura and Manipur. Uh, Nagaland, Mefa, that is Arunachal Pradesh, all, everything, they're all part of Assam. But we see hill states movement, Meghalaya being created, uh, you know, and I grew up in Shillong. I was born in Shillong. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, I'm of Sileti stock. So, uh, we have a very hundred year old history, uh, you know, in that region. Uh, and uh, so, so, all I'm trying to say is that we need to historically uh, uh, locate uh, this identity and map these processes of construction. Yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I've been pretty long. I'm sorry I took so long. No, no, thank you. This is uh, what we are trying to do. We're trying to get uh, as many insights from you as possible. There is, you see, it's a kind of a double disorder that is going on so far as the Bengalis in the Northeast are concerned. On the one hand, it is the people of Assam and the other seven sister states who feel as if Bengalis are monopolizing the jobs and powerful positions, etc. And that is why they need to be dissolved. They need to be uh, excluded from those states. And on the other hand, in the Bengali imagination itself, it seems that somehow these spaces of 
whether it is Kachar or Silet or Shillong, it seems that these places are somehow receding and they are not included in the Bengali imagination in the way that they used to be. I mean, in the past, whether it is Rubindranath or Saurabh Chandra or anybody else for that matter, if one, look at, if one looks at the authors and the literary journeys of their characters, then we see that whether it is Rangoon or Shillong or different other parts of uh, contemporary Bangladesh, there was a great deal of movement that these characters engaged in. But nowadays, it seems that the Bengali imagination is confining to a much more shrunk territory because of which these northeastern locales are sort of slipping out of the Bengali imagination as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, but you know, uh, I have a, just uh, one important, uh, let me respond this way. Uh, while it is true that uh, there is this uh, ongoing process of disengagement, right? Uh, if I may say, uh, from the region and from uh, what uh, existed on the margins of the Bengali imagination, right? And uh, what you seem to suggest is that there was some kind of engagement in the past, but we are going through this. Now, in this context, what I would like, and this is what I think, you know, when I read the complex situation of the region, is that uh, there was engagement. Tagore, Rabindranath, for instance, uh, was engaged uh, with the Assamese uh, uh, in one way or the other, not always very favor favorably, but, well, there was an engagement. Uh, and Rabindranath uh, visited Shillong, wrote his uh, Sheshe Kovita and stuff like that. But, uh, and you know, he, he, he wrote about Silet, you know, Rabindranath visited Silet. But we, here we have to understand, what I'm trying to again say is that the engagement, was it really, you know, uh, uh, a substantive engagement? That is what needs to be uh, explored. Uh, researched something which I have not really done, but some I, I keep thinking because uh, for 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 Bengalis who have lived on you know not only just not select say people of no, uh, of Noah Kali for instance or Chattogram for instance Chittagong right now these so because Bengali imagination was so Calcutta centric okay for a very long time. And I'm talking long time means, say, 200 years, you know. Uh, we are not talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, that time when, you know, the Mofoshal, Mofosil of Bengal featured in the writings, right? Rabindranath is an exception, right? So, but we, we, we really should not go with the exceptions. But what I'm trying to again say is that I don't think that the engagement with, you know, for instance, there was always this thing about uh, uh, the dialects. And this is a very thorny issue when it comes to the Bengalis. You have the Ghoti Bangal division. We may say that there is no such division, but somebody needs to research this Ghoti Bangal. Uh, you know, I, 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 I did not pay much attention to it, but I do have that in my thesis. It's a very important distinction because it exists. It's a cultural distinction, right? And even today, even today, uh, you know, in conversations, you know, even if it's like, you know, you know, you speak in a jocular way, you, you you keep talking about these things, right? And you keep asking whether Mamata Banerjee is Bangal or not Bangal, whether she has Gopi blood, this, that. So it's there. So the point is that I think uh, not only uh, what I would call the English educated, the core Bengali middle class, particularly the Hindu upper caste middle class, which dominated uh, the imperial administration and, you know, Calcutta, created Calcutta, made Calcutta what Calcutta is, was, right? Uh, that hardly, and if at all they engaged, they only engaged because it was exotic. So it's the same thing <laughs> that we see 
in the context of you know a western uh, uh, gaze uh, you know and i'm sure all of you know and you are aware of these things uh, so and uh, the people uh, who lived uh, even on the territorial margins because away from the center right, they always felt that the quote unquote calcutta bengalis did not do enough and this was uh, uh, this was uh, you know i grew up with that feeling and uh, uh, not that it really mattered because, you know, we were not really looking for recognition in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, cultural connectedness, uh, particularly the facility middle class, but definitely, uh, uh, you know, during times of trouble and when Bengalis went through the, or are still going through tremendous, uh, you know, trauma in the Northeast, uh, uh, very, very few people, uh, you know, helped. Uh, I remember my father saying about Indrajit Gupta, who was the CPI MP, I'm sure you have heard, and, uh, and Jyoti Boshu, for instance. The communists completely refused to engage, uh, I'm sorry to say this, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, you know, this, this Bengali question. Because this did not really fall into that frame <laughs> where, where one could effectively intervene. Right? So the point that you're trying to make is that I will say that the engagement was of a very different kind. And the engagement was like the way uh, Western anthropologists uh, in, uh, in 17th, uh, 18th, 19th century engaged with the East, you know, or uh, as since I do anthropology, uh, you know, social or sociology and social anthropology, that's why I, I, I'm choosing this, <laughs> you engage. So uh, it becomes, so Shillong is this beautiful place. It's beautiful, right? Cynic. You come, you ride, you go back. And, uh, and, uh, and Tagore, and, and still people love Tagore. Because Tagore wrote Mavotahin, Kalos Sote, Sibumi, Sihotto. And you know how, you know, because of time, you know, Rashtra Shima Hote, you know, outside the nation, state borders and whatever. Uh, so that's what happened. So we would routinely make fun of, or if there would be this whole, uh, so it was not a relationship of equals, if I must say. So this disengagement is understandable. Uh, 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 because I think uh, the engagement was not substantive enough. And that's why this, uh, you know, disengagement. Despite uh, the lack of substantive engagement that was there, as you yourself have written about Shillong, for example, there was a Bongyo Shahitya Purishad, for example, which mm -hmm. was associated mm -hmm. with the Bongyo Shahitya Purishad of Kolkata as well. Mm -hmm. And how even after independence up to the 1980s, there would be these regular uh, publications, meetings, conferences, and different luminaries from Bengal would also come and visit and contribute to the very vital Bengali culture that was still very much there as part of the sociocultural fabric of Shillong. Now, in terms of what has been happening over the last 20 years or so, do you uh, think that the fabric receding or disintegrating to a certain extent? Yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, a correction here, uh, not correction really, but um, perhaps I did not, I was not clear enough. And uh, of course, uh, the Bungeshaito Purishod and, uh, you know, uh, everyone, I mean, say Shuniti Chattopadhyay, you know, think of everyone. If everyone's been to Shillong, but again, Shillong is the, was the Calcutta of Northeastern India. So you understand, so Shillong is a different space. Uh, it's an elite space and, uh, you know, uh, uh, populated by the, uh, as I said, uh, service, Western educated Bengali middle class, Sileti middle class, right? So, uh, and uh, because of Shillong's, uh, you know, being the headquarters of, uh, you know, Imperial Assam. So uh, it was a very, uh, you know, Western influenced, West influenced city. So, uh, of course, 
the Bengali middle class of Silet, uh, the Sileti middle class, always looked up to Calcutta. And that's another reason for this fantastic rift with the Assamese. Because the reference point of reference was always Calcutta. It was Bongya Shahid Kapurishwar. Because it's that class which connected. You know, connected meaning they wanted to. Right? So, uh, you know, they studied, for instance, if you, uh, I, you know, take my, my family, for example, my father, uh, his brothers, they all studied in Calcutta in the 1940s. Right. My my own grandfather, you know, uh, uh, my paternal grandfather uh, studied in Calcutta uh, in 1905. He graduated from what was called the Metropolitan Institution, then, which, when, which later came to be called the Bidda Shagor College. He graduated. He moved out of his village in Silet of Sanskrit, traditional Sanskrit learning and moved to Calcutta. Uh, and then came back to Shillong and uh, uh, 1908 joined the, uh, you know, uh, 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 the administration and retired in very high position because he was English educated. I'm talking about 130 years, uh, you know, uh, 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 ago. So, and all, all of them studied. So, because this class could afford, right? And they wanted to connect. So, I think the, uh, the, the urge to connect was more from the side of Silet. Uh, then from, uh, uh, you know, Bengal, the Calcutta-based, uh, you know, uh, Bengal. Uh, but at the same time, as I've argued elsewhere in my thesis, for instance, I also argued that at the same time, a Sileti identity took shape, you know. Uh, so it was urged to connect with Bengal, but modeled on that we do have, because we have Silet Association formed in 1876 by Bipin Chandrapal in, in Calcutta. Pinchandrupal was a Sileti. So was Shundori Mohandas, who established the National Medical College. Right? So all, all Siletis, who, and there were Brahmos also. That's again an important point. And moved, and 1876, we have the Silet uh, Association in Calcutta. Uh, uh, so why was there a need to establish a Silet Association? So anyway, uh, many other things, but this is the point that uh, I thought, uh, you know, is important. The urge was more to connect. So, of course, uh, you know, throughout the 80s, 90s, uh, Bengalis from, uh, quote unquote, mainland Bengal, we really don't know which is the mainland, but <laughs> as we say, we are fond of saying <laughs> from mainland, did come. But as I said, uh, mm, you know, there was, uh, what, what shall I say? In Bangla, I think, uh, you know, I, I often don't find appropriate English words, is that uh, it's Obhiman. You know what I mean. Uh, you know, of the <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get the word. What would be Obhiman in English? There is no Obhiman. Yeah, it will not really, you know. Not translated. Yeah. So, so that remained, and uh, you know, experience has been terrible, terrible. I grew up in this very volatile 80s, 79, you know, when the first pogrom started in Meghalaya because of the influence of the Assam movement. Terrible. So, and uh, that's the reason why after many years, I initially worked on Pakistan. I worked on Sindhis and Mohajis. I worked on partition. But uh, I eventually moved, and I've not, in fact, fully moved to Northeast. I'm just beginning to, because those years are, you just cannot forget. And uh, yeah, all said, fine, you know, the Bengalis did dominate everything. But, but we know, history has taught us, you know, if you keep blaming each other, nothing count, comes out of that at the end of the day. It's only coal at huge damage and, you know, Mass exodus of Bengalis from that region. Right. Sorry, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Point. I have a. Uh, yeah, Shayan. Yeah. Uh, Go on. Uh, you were talking about how the sort of uh, with the influx of uh, refugees uh, mm -hmm. post, I mean, during the uh, independence, 1947 independence, then uh, and the uh, during the 1971 Bangladesh war. Now, uh, what I was wondering was that, uh, you know, uh, generally what happens is uh, we tend to make a, a kind of very, uh, uh, a kind of a very easy equation regarding the conflict between the Assamese and the 
something what is like the, the Bengali khata on the room. So it becomes a kind of a binary. But what I was uh, sort of the keen on uh, knowing was how did the, uh, let's say, privileged uh, uh, class in, in terms of the Bengalis who were living uh, there, how did they react? In the sense, uh, was it, uh, was there a kind of a, 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 a disengagement regarding what was happening with, um, uh, with the beginning of the insurgency when uh, the focus was also against uh, the uh, the UP, the Hindi-speaking uh, uh, migrant laborers were there in Assam. So, how was was class an ever an issue uh, in, in in the conflict, in the insurgency, in the violence uh, that that was there in the late 1970s and sort of the beginning of the insurgency? Hmm. So, uh, uh, see, uh, the. Uh, uh, 1979-71 is Bangladesh war uh, and uh, later when we uh, see the signing of the Assam Accord in 1985 and we all okay. know all of this by now because of thanks to NRC and uh, uh, CAA uh, all of this uh, you know we know I'm not Jani at home you know the key hoye chilo exactly you know, what happened so 24th March 1971 is the cut off year so, Rati Barotar Pore Hule, you are a non Indian citizen. <laughs> so, it's the cutoff is 12 o'clock, 24th March 1971. That's there in the Assam Accord, which is which was signed by Rajiv Gandhi and the Assam All Assam Students Union in 1985. So, 71 onwards, we see the influx, and this was all uh, done with uh, you know, because we know India's role in Bangladesh war. So when the Assam movement, uh, you know, uh, took off, and uh, with, the, with basically the you know uh, the voter uh, electoral role issue in Mongolia constituency, uh, and we know that entire phase. Uh, so uh, it it was initially directed. It was directed against both Hindus and Muslims in Assam. Both Hindus and Muslims. In case of Muslims. Uh, though the Muslims, particularly of Maiman Singh stock, again, I make a distinction here between uh, the uh, Muslims, Sileti speaking Muslims, who are mainly confined to Borak Valley, but the Brahmaputra Valley Muslims, right? This is a very important uh, 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 difference. Uh, so they also became victims of, you know, this, uh, this movement. And, you know, Immigration has always been great business in Assam. I often think uh, that uh, our, our state, uh, you know, for the last 75 years, they just, there's just one issue which kind of brings everybody together in Assam. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Can. Of course, there are genuine problems. Assam was burdened with, you know, with refugees, all of that. But the pogroms, you cannot justify genocide. And that's what happened in a place called Nelly. I don't know if you know of Nelly. Nelly Massacre. Yeah. Right? And so that Nelly Massacre is what is called the big event. Right? And we always get to know about the big events. Right? In a way. In, even Nelly was not known about because, you know, we, we know the politics. Right? And uh, was not known. But apart from Nelly, with all due, you know, uh, sympathy and you know our condolences to Nelly. There are countless other incidents. We have personal incidents. Of course, I did not live in Assam at that point. I was not born in Assam. I was born after Meghalaya was created in 1972. But uh, uh, I was not there. But I have heard stories. You know, my cousins who studied there, you know, in the university, they had to leave, mine, beaten up. So what? The, uh, and then it spread to Meghalaya, Shillong, and 79 onwards, we see. So the response of the people, the classical, classic response of the Bengali, of the middle class, it was directed against Bengalis in 79, then the Nepalis, then the Hindi speakers, you know. So we have three, I think they did what they could and, you know, what their class position allowed them to do, uh, including people like my father or many others, you know. Senior. So they wrote. They wrote memorandum. They wrote prayers, petitions. The the classic, uh, you know, Congress moderate 
uh, 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 the, the kind of politics which was done constitutionally, legally jana hai aapko, likhna hai, appeal, right to the governor, right to so and so. But of course nothing happened. Uh, uh, if you look at the inquiry commission reports, you will see no conviction. Even lodging an FIR would be so difficult in Shillong against uh, the, the majority you know, community, the, the tribals. Impossible. Impossible. So nothing happened. You know, they formed a citizens forum. So what was the next response? They left Shillong. Like people like me who could, you know, who could find a place, studied outside, studied in Delhi, now live in Delhi, can't go back. But, uh, you know, can go back, but there's always this feeling. So what it is like to live with this feeling that you are despised, you know. So Bengalis emerged in the course of 200 years, the single enemy, common enemy of all the communities of Northeastern region. Right? So, of course, uh, uh, historically we have to look at it. But that has resulted also in killings, harassment. So the middle class response was also to leave. Right? Was also to leave that region. And people who behind, they stayed behind them. They're suffering every day. They, they suffer every day, every day. So just a, a few months ago, you know, you had posters all over Shillong that all Bengalis are Bangladeshis. And why was this? I have those posters. Uh, uh, so pictures and why was the case, what was the case? The case was again the CAA and the uh, ILP issue, the inner line permit issue. And you know it will take us a lot of time. I can explain the whole inner line thing and so on. But Meghalaya is not part of the inner line uh, you know, frame. Nagaland is there. Manipur was granted inner line status uh, by the BJP by this government, and uh, and it has to be done by the Home Ministry. Right. Assam is actually the only state where CA, uh, CAA will be applicable, except for the six scheduled areas. There, is, there are also six scheduled areas in North. So, so Northeast, in every possible way, is very, very complex. Uh, you know, there are so many forces. I think even the term Northeast, I, keep, I also use it, you also use it. But that is also an artificial category. You know, these are, these are, categories created by the state to, to facilitate also to, so what has also happened is uh, this complete isolation. Isolation which uh, uh, happened because the state, uh, you know, dealt with Northeast in a particular way, these spaces in post-partition India. So part, Northeast came into existence because of partition. Had there been no partition, there wouldn't be this chicken neck, you know, which takes us through New Jalpaiguri and then connect. Itna sa jo jaga hai. Otherwise, there's nothing to connect Northeast with the rest of India. And it's surrounded by international borders and now, you know, China. So, uh, so it's complex. So, I don't know if I got your question correctly, but the response, as I said, uh, various classes, uh, you know, uh, responded and uh, uh, in various ways. But exodus, fleeing the place, was definitely, particularly I'm talking about Shillong, not from Borat Valley, by the way, not so much from Borat Valley, because that's again a Bengali, uh, a Bengali area, huh? Yeah, it says Bengali, and that has another history. I mean, I we know. cannot go, yeah, it will be too long, uh, some other time perhaps. But uh, when it comes to uh, responses, I mean, if we look at the history of India, all these various forms of violence, exodus, this is something which has ravaged our country for a very long time. Whether it is Kashmir, whether it is various uh, communal riots in UP, Bihar, or uh, during uh, the Gujarat genocide, these are all these violence episodes. And many of them have also given birth to a great deal of literary and cultural representation. In your experience, have the problems faced by the Bengalis in Assam or Shillong during the post-independence, have they uh, manifested themselves in the form of adequate cultural representation? Yeah, 
cultural representation would mean, uh, for instance, what? Say, uh, uh, poetry. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so I got you correctly. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 uh, I'm an avid uh, reader of war and, you know, particularly uh, World War and the Holocaust. And, uh, and you, after, you know, these, these, these major, of course, we're not going to compare this to the Holocaust. But uh, the kind of response, emotional, cultural response, you know, you see, and it also uh, changes over generations, you know. So uh, when it comes to cultural representations, I can uh, uh, speak of uh, uh, Shlong in particular, because that's my primary experience. Uh, you have a host of writings, and particularly uh, for the last two decades, you know, a uh, lot of writings uh, on, on that on that period, on that phase, and very interestingly, and here I must, uh, 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 you know, make a uh, you know special mention of even uh, you know Khasi literatures uh, who have uh, uh, you know written about and are continue and are writing every day. You have you know this kind of you know representation of what happened uh, and what is happening to that uh, that space called Shlom, right? Uh, and uh, we have, for instance, we have Anjum Hassan's work, you know, uh, Anjum Hassan's, uh, she's uh, well known, uh, she, you know, she studied in Shillong, she was my senior a year in college, and uh, her first work is Gru, uh, Lunatic in My Head, that is one, for instance. There are many more, we have somebody called Nilanjan Pal Choudhury, uh, who's just written, you have Shidhar Todev, who uh, wrote Point of Return, uh, the surface, the number surface, I think. Surface. Yeah, but the first book of Shidhar, they grew up in Shillong. Yeah, yeah, Shilong. all of them. And then we have Janice, for instance, Janice Parriott. Uh, she's Khasi. She has written, uh, you know, Boats on Land, you know, this collection. Lot of work. There's a latest uh, work by somebody called Kin Farm Singh Nongkinri. I don't know if you've heard, he's a very well-known poet. poet, poet. Uh, his yeah, last collection was a collection of haiku. Uh, I mean, you are literatures and you do a lot of poetry, as I saw in <laughs> on Plato's caves. So, a uh, uh, lot of work, a lot of work. So, uh, so, this is, so I want to put this on record and uh, that, you know, so much, particularly in, uh, you know, in, in the genre of literature, you have so much coming out. So uh, when we want to uh, interpret that situation, uh, you know, with the maturity that most often comes with age, <laughs> is also not to react and to and to try to understand. Uh, and in a way, uh, uh, to under so so of course, you know, whether understanding is forgiveness or not is an issue, but. Uh, it's not a question of that. It's about, you know, worse uh, things have happened in, you know, uh, uh, history. So South Africa established a Truth and Reconciliation Commission because, or, you know, if you take the case of Rwanda, you know, the, the, the clash between the Hutus and the Tutsis, and you have. So we have to try and find a way. We have to try and find a way. And I think uh, these uh, literary representations of Shillong uh, are going to contribute enormously, both by the Khasis and the non Khasis. Right? So the Khasis write. And so Kim Farm's new book, I'm just reading, it's a thousand pages book. Uh, it's called Funeral Nights. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I didn't know so many things. It's so sad, you know, I grew up. But uh, we all were brought, uh, brought up in, you know, uh, enclaves, right? And that is what happens, you know, in, in cities where, you know, uh, I will not uh, use the term ghetto. Uh, uh, now these are gradually turning into ghettos, but uh, uh, but we were also, we also led very sheltered lives. Uh, you know, I, for instance, or, or maybe because, also because I'm a, I, I'm a woman, right? So we were always protected. So the Bengalis would always say, no, 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 don't go, uh, you know. So, so I think from, so both sides lack that engagement. 
you know and now we see more and more engagement we have we have people like patricia mukhim for instance you know who's the editor of shillong times and who's very vocal uh, you know about all these things you know writing we have many others we have kishalay bhattacharji uh, who's a journalist and he was he told me some that he was also writing something so lot of uh, literary works in fact uh, anjum hasan will come up with a new book called shillong the first city of so which talks about all of this samrat uh, choudhury is another journalist who have many i can name as i said king farms is the latest book and i am learning so much from this so uh, uh, it's 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 coming it's definitely no nobody uh, just to sort of continue with the with the issues that you raised Uh, a few, um, I think, a month ago, maybe a year back, there was a collection uh, of of poems brought out, I think, by Jerry Pinto. It was uh, sort of a, a book on a uh, focusing or on the maybe poets writing in English in India, and there was not a single poet from North East against which uh, the likes of uh, Robin. translation so he is there you know so much but in case of uh, this kind of uh, thing but i think amongst um, all the uh, uh, states i think the kasi uh, literature uh, is uh, you know or writings are now coming out so there is also some space see uh, uh, marginality also has its <laughs> own potential <laughs> so uh, in some cases now as we have become more aware and you know the need to you know uh, represent uh, i think these voices will find a space they are finding space uh, the situation is much better compared to central indian uh, populations tell me which uh, author of uh, origin in bastar have you read i i don't know i i also read a lot of what is known as you know, literature but i don't i or and i follow you know i follow but amar to mone pore na am porche na i don't know enlighten me please i cannot uh, there's this gentleman na oi je shekhar hansa hansdar shomen shomen he is a, uh, of uh, shaudal stock or munda 
Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B